Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build a notepad with PySimple GUI. There's a lot of Python notepad projects out there, but not very many that can do it in less than 100 lines of code, including spaces and comments. And that is the power of PySimple GUI. So if you're looking to add a project to your portfolio, or you want to get some experience with a GUI, then you've come to the right place. Although the notepad we're going to build is a little bit more complicated than what you see here, you can actually get the basic GUI with a menu up and running in four lines of code. That, my friends, is pretty incredible. Instead of boring you with 40 minutes of watching me code, I'm going to instead quickly walk through everything you're going to need to get started on this project, including a brief recap of the GUI framework, the design approach, some tips and things you need to know, and then I'll give you the link to the code so that you can play with a live demonstration and play with the code yourself. This project is going to use the PySimple GUI library, which is a framework for Tekenter. Tekenter typically comes standard with Python distributions. However, if you don't have it, you can install it by typing in pip install Tekenter uh, in your command prompt. And then speaking of installation, you'll need to install PySimple GUI with either pip or conda. And depending on your operating system and Python distribution, it's likely going to be one of the following commands. This project may be using some features that are not part of the released version of PySimple GUI, so you may want to download the latest unreleased version from the PySimple GUI GitHub site if you experience any issues. With a PySimple GUI application, there are three essential design elements. The window, which is what you recognize as an application window the layout, which contains the elements in the window, such as buttons, text, etc. The event loop, which listens for events such as button clicks and other types of events, and then executes callbacks or instructions that you specify. All right, let's look at the layout in a little bit more detail. PySimple GUI manages the layout with lists. If you think about the elements in the window in terms of rows, the entire layout is a list container. Each row in the window is managed by another list which contains all of the elements in that row. You can see here that I have the outer list of the layout, and then in each row, I have a new list with the objects corresponding to the elements in the notepad. This makes for a very intuitive way to manage the GUI layout. In this application, we're going to use two different layouts, one for the menu and one for the main window. In each of those layouts, it's going to be a list. So looking at this conceptually, we're going to create a list of the items that we want in the menu, such as file, save, exit, etc. And that list is going to be passed as an argument to a menu object. And that menu object is going to be nested inside of the main window layout. And then finally, that main window layout is going to be assigned as the layout for the GUI main window. So let's go ahead and look at the code for this layout. Here you can see a snapshot of the code for the GUI. After I import the library, I set up some default values, which I'll get to in a second, and then I code the menu and main layouts. As you saw in the previous illustration, the layouts are built with lists. The menu layout is fairly straightforward. Each list row corresponds to an option on the main menu header. You can see I have three lists here, which correspond to the three menu options, file, tools, and help. You can also see that there are sublists. So for example, the file menu, which is a list, contains within it another list that contains the options for the file menu. Now, I've not tested it, but theoretically, this series of nesting could continue for as many layers as you want. I've personally used about three layers of nested menu options, but if you decide to test the limits, let me know about your results in the comments below. You'll notice that one of the menu options is a series of three dashes. This creates a horizontal break on the menu, which you can see between the save as and exit options in the file menu. Also, you'll see that I've tried to save space by assigning variable names to the text on some of my longer menu option names. This is definitely not required. It's just a decision I made personally to make this code a little bit more readable for me. Next is the main layout. Believe it or not, this main layout only includes three elements, a menu element, a text element, and a multi-line text element. The menu element requires a menu definition, which is the menu layout that we defined above. You can also supply optional parameters to adjust the look and feel of the menu. The text element requires a text argument and accepts additional keyword arguments, and I'm using this element to display the name of the open or saved file. Finally, the multi-line element has no required parameters, but you can pass in optional parameters as needed to adjust the size and format 
And this is the element that I'm using to input text. Let's look at the window. This requires a window title, which I've put as notepad. And then I've indicated which layout I want to use in this window. You can also pass in other optional parameters, which I've done here. Um, I've removed the margins, for example, and this is the space between the elements and the inside of the main window. I've also set the resizable flag as true, and this will allow me to adjust the window size while I'm using the application. I've also turned on keyboard events, and what this does is it allows me to listen for specific key presses in my while loop so that I can use keyboard shortcuts to execute the menu commands such as open file, save file, etc. If you want your GUI to actually do something, you're going to need to listen for events. And if you want the window to remain open, you'll need to use an event loop that will keep listening to subsequent events after an event has occurred. When you call the read method on the window element, the window is opened up on the screen. And every time an event occurs, the window returns two items, the event name and a dictionary of values from the elements in the window. You can see here that I have pressed several menu option buttons, and each time I get a name of the event, which in this case is the button or option name, and then I get a dictionary of items in the main window that have values associated with them. Now the menu is going to return whatever item I press within that dictionary, uh, but what I'm also going to get, as you can see, is the value of the multi-line body element, which includes the words hello, which I've typed into the element. After the startup section, which I'll get to in a moment, you'll see that the first item I'm listening for is none. A none event occurs when you click the X button to close the window at the upper right hand corner of the screen. And when this occurs, I want to break out of this loop and close the window. Now I've also set this to happen when I click the exit button, which is why you can see that I'm listening for both none and exit. You can see how easy it would be to perform callbacks by simply evaluating the name of the event. In a moment, you'll see an example of how this works with a specific function. Finally, a brief note about the startup routine. This is actually a workaround for an issue that is currently present when a window is finalized in PySimple GUI. And when I say finalized, that's basically it's building a Tkinter window. Now, I expect this to be fixed in future releases of PySimple GUI. I won't go into details, but when this fix occurs, what I would do here is I would simply remove the startup flag altogether. I'd move the maximize and expand sections above the while loop and then pass in finalize equals true when I create the window element. What I'm doing here is calling the maximize method to start up the window maximized. I'm also going to make sure that the multi-line body element is expanded to fill the available space by calling the expand method. Now, I know you may be asking yourself, why am I using the window like a dictionary with body as a key? That's a good question. Let's address that in a little bit more detail. In many GUI applications, you'll need to update various elements after they're created. For example, I want to update the info bar text box to show the file name if I open a new file or save a file. Or in the case that we just saw, I may want to change something about the element such as the color, the font, or its functionality such as expanding. So how is this done? Well, at the top you can see that I've defined a function for a new file that sets the value of the multi-line body element as an empty string and the text info bar to the file name new file. As you may have noticed, I'm using the window element that I created, like a dictionary, and I'm looking up a key that I've defined as body and info. These are in fact the elements that I've defined in my layout. In PySimple GUI, when you assign a key to the element, you can use that key to look up the item from the window and perform updates on it. And in this case, the text and multi-line elements have an update method that allow me to update the text values. Okay, let's look at callbacks. Callbacks are very simple. In this case, I've defined a function that counts the number of words in the document. And all I need to do is check for a particular event or events in the while loop using an if statement, and then call that function as a result. Any event can be handled in this way. That, my friends, is the project in a nutshell. This is a fairly simple project, but it can be expanded to fit your needs. For example, I'm currently expanding this basic GUI design to create a code editor in PySimple GUI that will actually run Python code. So ironically, I can run a PySimple GUI script inside of a program designed by PySimple GUI. Very, very cool stuff. 
You can check out the code for yourself on my GitHub repository, and also you can run the application live by checking out the link on Trinket. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for future videos like this. And check out some of these other videos. See you later.